Am I audible? Good evening, Abhishek. Am I audible? Am I audible, everyone? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, just one second. Okay, so any doubt till now, whatever we have discussed? Anyone, any doubt? So this is a numerical session today. We are going to focus questions on uh, second law as well as uh, entropy. Okay, so before we go ahead, I hope that you may have revised what we have done. So whatever doubt you have till now, we can discuss any doubt or we can start with the questions. Yes, no. Should we start with the questions? Should we start with the questions? Okay, okay, Tika. So let us start. So it is a numerical session. We will be focusing on second law and entropy questions. And I hope if even if you have some doubts, We'll try to clear it today itself. Okay. Now, let us start with the first question. And I hope that you have revised already. So you already remember the concept of heat engine, ref uh, refrigerator, heat pump, Carnot cycles, how to calculate COP for a reversible engine, all that. Okay. Now, what is the question saying? A Carnot cycle. Okay. The question says, first of all, we have a Carnot heat engine. Carnot means what? Reversible. Okay. So we have a reversible heat engine. And it receives. So it's, it's always a good idea to draw that diagram. Okay. So draw this heat engine. So this heat engine is a clockwise device which absorbs heat from a higher temperature T1, how much heat? Q1. And produces some work output, net work output. And the rest of heat is rejected or lost to the lower temperature surrounding T2. Okay, this is this this is something that you should draw. It's a good idea. Okay. So it receive, receives 500 kilojoule of heat per cycle from a high temperature source 652 degrees celsius that means it is receiving this is your engine right it is receiving how much q1 500 kilojoule from high temperature source 652 so that is that means 652 is how much always write this in kelvin 9 652 925 Kelvin. Okay. And rejects heat to low temperature sink at 30 degrees Celsius. So this T2 is 30 degrees Celsius means 303 Kelvin. Determine the thermal efficiency of the Carnot engine and the amount of heat rejected. Amount of heat rejected to the sink. So I need to find out efficiency of this reversible heat engine and q2 very simple question i hope that you have already done this it's very simple so efficiency it is a first of all you see is it a reversible engine yes so if it is a reversible engine i can apply reversible heat engine formula which is t1 minus t2 by t1 or i can write 1 minus T2 by T1. Now I know both the things. 
आई नो बोथ द थिंग्स वन माइनस थ्री जीरो थ्री बाई नाइन ट्वेंटी फाइव सो दिस इज जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन एफिशियंसी जे हाउ कैन इट बी मोर देन वन एफिशियंसी इज ऑलवेज लेस देन वन राइट सीओपी कुड बी मोर देन वन बट एफिशियंसी इज ऑलवेज लेस देन वन ओके दिस इज योर एफिशियंसी J, what did you do wrong in efficiency? Then second is this. Second is this. So now it is by Carnot in Jan. So I can also write this efficiency is equals to one minus t two by t one is equals to what was the normal formula? Net work upon heat input. Okay. so from here i can calculate this so efficiency is 0.6725 net work upon q1 is how much 500 so net work i have gotten 0.6725 into 500 and it is 336.25 kJ this is your net work but they are not asking network they are asking this so what will i do i will simply do the first law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics which is energy balance energy in is equals to energy out so i will do energy balance around this system okay so what is coming in q1 is coming in what is going out network is going out Q2 is going out. Okay, so Q2 is equals to Q1 minus network. So this is 500 minus 336.25. So it is 163.7 kilo joule. Okay. So yes, J, this is correct. But what happened with efficiency? is it clear to everyone this question any doubt first and second law questions are very simple heat engine and everything heat engine heat pump refrigerator questions are very simple okay so is it fine everyone is it clear come on it's quite simple all the formulas we have already discussed okay okay so let's move ahead to the next question now what do we have we have a heat pump we have a heat pump and it is used सबसे पहले लेट अस ड्रॉ अ हीट पंप दिस इज हीट पंप एंड दिस इज अ एंटी क्लॉकवाइज डिवाइस ओके नाउ व्हाट डज इट डू इट एब्सॉर्ब हीट फ्रॉम द लोअर टेम्परेचर टी टू हाउ मच हीट क्यू टू एंड ट्रांसफर्स इट टू द हायर टेम्परेचर तो व्हाट इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द हीट पंप एनी to maintain low temperature or to maintain high temperature what is the objective of heat pump to maintain low temperature or to maintain high temperature objective of heat pump to maintain high temperature yes so the objective of heat pump is to maintain high temperature okay So the heat pump is used to heat a house during winter season. The house is to be maintained. So this is my house, okay? This is my house in winter, and it is to be maintained at twenty-one degree Celsius. So twenty-one means what? Twenty-one means two ninety-four Kelvin. Two ninety-four 
294 kelvin at all times the house is estimated to be losing heat at the rate of 135000 kilo joule per hour so basically it is losing heat you loss 135000 kilo joule per hour so if, if this heat is lost from this room so the function the purpose of heat pump is to supply this heat so i can maintain this constant temperature so basically i need to supply 35000 kilo joule per hour okay when the outside temperature drops to minus 5 degree celsius that means t2 is 268 kelvin determine the minimum power required minimum power you see so this is an indication that it is it i should take it as carnot heat pump okay so you see you have to see these words what words you have to see if you see if they are saying for example let us let us talk about heat engine so how to identify identify it is a reversible engine so either they will give you directly reversible heat engine or they will give you carnot heat engine these are very simple words and you will know it is a reversible engine or they will give maximum work output so if they are asking for maximum work output or they have given maximum work output in question that means it is a reversible engine or they will give you minimum heat lost or heat rejected that means q2 is minimum okay so basically if work is maximum you see you are giving q1 and if you have q maximum so of course q2 is what minimum because this q1 is divided into this and this so if this is maximum then this is minimum so they will give you minimum heat loss now when you talk about refrigerator or heat pump so either they will give you reversible refrigerator or they will give you carnot refrigerator or heat pump or reverse carnot also they can give you okay then they can give you minimum work input minimum work input so if it is reversible heat in heat pump or refrigerator it requires minimum work it requires so you have to give minimum work minimum work okay in order to extract this heat okay so these are the words that will tell you that it is a reversible engine or reversible heat pump or refrigerator okay so in this question they are saying minimum power required yani ki minimum work input required minimum work input required in kilowatt to drive this heat pump so basically it is saying it is a carnot heat pump and what is the cop of carnot heat pump anyone can you tell me what is the cop of carnot heat pump should i take higher temperature in the numerator or the lower temperature higher yes minakshi very good so we have t1 here and denominator we had work input but we have taken done the energy balance and finally it is t1 minus t2 so we know everything what do we know and it is also equal to q1 upon work input minimum okay so t1 now power you see i have to convert this into kilowatt so i need to i need power work into kilowatt so i need to convert this also in kilowatt okay so q1 is equals to 135 000 kilo joule per hr i need to convert it into kilo joule per second so what will i do i will simply divided by 3600 so it is kilo joule per 
second okay so now how much is this how much is this 135 this is 37.5 kilowatt 37.5 kilowatt okay now t1 t1 is how much 294 how much is t1 294 minus 268 37.5 upon minimum power minimum work input shivendra raj i have already told you i am somewhere in between please don't do this you should wait no when i am stopping somewhere then only i can go to some slide okay so when you solve this when you solve this so you will get how much 294 divided by 294 minus 260 8 so it is 11.3 is equals to 37.5 minimum power so power i have to write like this so minimum is equals to 37.5 upon 11.3 so when you divide 37.5 by this 3.31 6 kilowatt is the answer so 3.31 this is the answer this is the yes 3.31 is the correct answer okay so this is your second now what do you want the first one this one okay this is the first slide done okay chalo so is this question clear to you this question is clear to everyone yes is it clear everyone there are so many people in the class please tell me if it is clear okay let's move ahead next question a steam power plant a steam power plant receives heat from the furnace so power plant means heat engine okay because it is giving you power so this is question number 2 okay let's move ahead so steam power power plant means it is something that gives you power so basically power output you will get from a heat engine so this is your heat engine and it is clockwise it receives heat from a furnace so furnace means high temperature at t1 and it is receiving heat q1 is equals to 280 gigajoule per hour okay 
heat losses to the surrounding air heat losses to the surrounding air from the steam as it passes through the pipes and other components are estimated to be 8 gigajoule per hour so basically from here there are some heat losses q2 not q2 q losses let me write it q losses so some heat loss is also happening Eight gigajoule per hour. If the waste heat is transferred to the cooling water at the rate of so Q two is equals to one sixty five gigajoule per hour at T two net power output and the thermal efficiency of the power plant. I need to tell. Okay. net power output and thermal efficiency i need to find out okay chalo so first thing i need to find out efficiency let me find out pehle efficiency so efficiency can i use this formula t वन माइनस टी टू बाई टी वन और वन माइनस टी टू कैन आई यूज दिस फॉर्मूला यस एफिशिएंसी ऑफ आ ओके एनी वन हू वॉन्ट्स टू से यस नो ओके या so basically yes i cannot use this formula why because nowhere in the question i can identify it is a reversible heat engine so i cannot do that okay so what will i do i will use my general formula i will use my general formula which is work network upon q1 network upon q1 now i don't know network so what will i do i will need to find out first of all net work output so every time what i do is first law of thermodynamics is energy in is equals to energy out what is my system here this is my system this is my system so what is coming in Q one is coming in. What is going out? Q loss is going out. Net work is going out. Plus Q two is going out. So net work I can find out. Q one minus Q two minus Q loss. So two eighty minus one sixty five minus eight. Okay. So this is one zero seven gigajoule per hour. One sixty seven gigajoule per hour. Okay. So this is my net power output. Net power output. Okay. If they are asking in kilowatt, then you can divide it by thirty six hundred. Okay. If they are because this is in kilojoule per hour. If you want to calculate in kilowatt, which is what kilojoule per second. then you can divide it by 3600 but since no okay it is in megawatt it is in megawatt so i need to divide it by 3600 one second okay one second this is gigawatts okay i wrote it uh, in incorrectly this is gigawatts okay so this is also giga joule per hour giga joule per hour now i can divide it by 3600 so 107 giga joule per hour into 136 36 00 seconds per hour into 1 upon 
वन थाउजेंड मेगा गीगा जूल पर मेगा जूल ओके सो आई कैन वन जीरो सेवन डिवाइडेड बाय नो 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 वन सेकेंड This is not helpful. Okay, so one zero seven divided by thirty six hundred. It is zero point zero two nine seven giga joule per second. So basically, this is giga giga watt. Yes, yes, yes. Now I can multiply it by one thousand, and it is twenty nine point seven. मेगा जूल पर सेकेंड और मेगा वॉट ओके सो दिस इज वन आंसर मतलब सेकेंड इज एफिशियंसी सो एफिशियंसी आई डोंट नीड टू वरी अबाउट आई कैन डायरेक्टली पुट इट इन दिस वे बिकॉज दिस इज ऑल्सो गिविन गीगा जूल पर आर ओके सो नेटवर्क इज वन जीरो सेवन गीगा जूल पर आर अपॉन क्यू वन इज टू एट्टी Giga joule per hour. So basically, we have the same units, so it does not matter. These will get cancelled, and one zero seven divided by two eighty. So you will have zero point three eight is the efficiency. So what is the right answer? B is the right answer. B is the right answer. Okay, got it. clear everyone okay chalo let's move on then let's move on to the next question question number 4 a four stroke bike engine wherever you see engine power plant it simply means your heat engine okay so your four stroke engine delivers let me draw it here itself heat engine delivers 80 kilowatt so work net is equals to 80 kilowatt of power while consuming fuel at so mass of fuel is basically 60 liters per hour 60 liters per hour okay so uh, this is basically volume flow rate volume flow rate is equals to 60 liters per hour or i can write 60 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter cube per hour the fuel has a heating value that is calorific value is 42000 kilo joule per kg and density is equals to 800 kg per meter cube what is the efficiency q1 q2 so again no way it is written it is car not in jan so you will have to work for normal formula which is net work upon q1 now net work i already know but q1 i need to find out how will i how will i need calculate q1 so q1 basically is what will be q1 is equals to mass flow rate which is kg per second into calorific value which is kilo joule per kg so basically it will be kg kg cancel kilo watt so mass flow rate into calorific value i know calorific value i do not know mass i do not know mass how can i calculate mass so mass flow rate is equals to volume flow rate into density volume flow rate into density okay so i can simply write here let me remove it from here let me write it here it is by density what is density mass flow rate mass per unit volume or mass flow rate per unit volume so mass flow rate is equals to density 
into volume flow rate into calorific value. Now density is 800, volume flow rate is 60 into 10 to the power minus 3. Okay, and it is per hour, per hour. So I need to divide it by 3600 to get it into per second. Okay, into calorific value is 42,000. Okay, so this is your Q1. This is your Q1. How much is Q1? Can you calculate this? How much is Q1? Yes, 560 kilowatt. Okay, so now I can calculate my efficiency. It T upon 560, numerator is also in kilowatt, denominator is also in kilowatt, so you can cancel this and it is 14.3%, 14.3%, okay, clear? Yes, my think that is correct. Okay, chalo. Let's move on to the next question. A steam power plant with a power output of, so again you have this power plant, power output that means work output is equals to 150 kilo megawatt, 150 megawatt. Consumes coal at the rate of 60. So mass flow rate of fuel is equals to 60 into 10 to the power 3 kg per hour. If I divide it by 3600, then it will be in seconds. Then it will be in seconds. Okay. Now if the heating value that is calorific value is 30,000 kilojoule per kg, determine the overall efficiency of the plant. Now this is something that you need to do. As it is similar to the last question, quickly tell me what is the efficiency. Quickly. What is the efficiency? Are you solving this or I am just idly waiting? Tell me yes or no if you are solving this. Okay, then tell me what is the answer. It is actually simpler than the last question. It is exactly like last question, but it is still simpler. No Abhishek. Do you mean nine percent? No. Yes. Srujana, so, that is correct. Zero point three or thirty percent. Okay. Thirty percent is the correct answer. Who else is getting thirty percent? How many people are getting thirty percent? Abhishek, if you are getting 9, okay, okay. Earlier, you see, if you are getting 9, then it simply means that you have done some wrong calculation. Okay, you should get 0 0.9. I mean, even 0 0.9 is like, you cannot get 0 0.9 because you cannot get this, those that high efficiency. Yes, Amit, that is correct, okay. 
but basically if you are directly calculating it doing something and getting nine that means you have done some calculation mistake because efficiency is always less than one okay so that should not happen that should not happen okay so it is 0 0.3 or 30 percent or 30 percent okay chalo let's move on to the next question very important question just focus here for some time okay now a house is to be maintained a house is to be maintained at 20 let us take summer case here summer and let us take winter case this side so we have to maintain room temperature 25 room temperature 25 degree celsius in both winter and summer for this purpose it is proposed to use a reversible device as the refrigerator in summer and heat pump in winter the ambient temperature is 40 degree celsius so t ambient is equals to 40 degree celsius in summers and t ambient is equals to 3 degree celsius in winter the energy energy losses as heat from the roof and the wall is estimated to be 5 kilowatt per degree so q lost is 5 kilowatt per degree celsius temperature difference between the room and the ambient so what is the delta t here delta t here is 15 right so q loss is equals to 15 into 5 that is 75 kilowatt okay similarly here q loss is this is 22 delta t is 22 so 22 into 5 so 22 into 5 will be how much 110 kilowatt okay between calculate the power required to operate the device in summer and winter power required i need to find out okay so let us draw this this is my refrigerator in summer i will use what refrigerator or ac anti clockwise so it will take heat q2 from lower temperature what is the lower temperature it is t2 is equals to 25 degree celsius 25 is how much 298 kelvin and it will take some work input and reject this heat q1 to higher temperature surrounding which is 40 so 40 is how much 40 is 40 plus 273 is 313 kelvin t1 okay now i need to find out the power required so you see it is a reversible it is a reversible device it is a reversible device okay they are saying it is a reversible device as refrigerator and yes 110 thank you okay refrigerator and heat pump is reversible okay so i can find out i need to find out this so cop can you tell me what is cop of refrigerator what should i write in the numerator t1 or t2 t1 or t2 t1 or t2 which what should i write t2 yes very nice t2 upon t1 minus t2 is equals to q2 upon work input q2 upon work input okay so now you see this is the energy that is lost from the room this is the energy that is lost from the room okay so basically this is your room here you see 
this is your room this is your room and energy is lost from the room so whatever energy is lost from the room where is it going one second uh, the ambient temperature is the energy lost as the heat from the energy loses from heat and the room is estimated to be okay so basically here what will happen here what will happen here you see this is room temperature room temperature is this and your your ambient temperature is this 313 okay so just try to imagine you are sitting in a room where ac is on and the temperature in your room is 298 outside the surrounding outside the room the temperature is 313 so what will happen energy losses will happen from the surrounding to the room so basically from outside because outside there is higher temperature so from outside heat losses will happen inside the room so basically heat leakage you can say here losses doesn't seem like a good word so heat leakage will happen from the surrounding to the to your room and because of this heat losses the temperature will increase but you do not want this temperature to increase so what will you do you will remove this heat whatever is lost so it is q is 2 is equals to q loss which is equals to 75 kilowatt 75 kilowatt okay so t2 t2 is how much t2 is 298 upon 313 minus 298 which is 15 q2 is 75 and work input simple work input you can calculate work input you can calculate how much i think 3.774 how much is this yes so look just try to imagine it is just try to imagine you are sitting in a room okay and the temperature inside this room this is your room okay and you have maintained temperature of this room as 300 kelvin okay now outside temperature t ambient the ambient is 350 kelvin 350 kelvin okay now what is it saying it is saying the energy losses as heat from the roof and the wall is estimated at 5 kilowatt per degree celsius temperature difference between the room and that is okay but basically energy losses happening from the roof and the wall now this losses in this heat pump you will understand in terms of heat losses okay but here saying heat losses it is little weird because it i mean it's very it's little difficult to understand the concept of losses here because usually losses we imagine as something going out from our system okay but here what is happening this is at 300 this is at 350 so naturally what will happen heat transfer will happen heat leakage you can say not i mean losses is okay but you can see it as a leakage so there will be some heat leakage that will happen inside the room right that is what it is trying to say by in this room you have some roof right in roof you have windows you have so from this roof from this window some heat transfer will happen inside so this is your q losses this is basically 75 kilowatt now because of this q losses that is so this heat is entering inside because of this you have to your temperature will increase and if you want to maintain this 300 kelvin at all times then whatever heat is entering here you need to remove this heat out so this is q2 so you will install a heat you will install a refrigerator which will extract this heat q2 by using a work input and give it back to surrounding q1 okay now is it under understandable okay okay now so this is your 
refrigerator. Now in winters, in winters what happens is you use a heat pump. You use a heat pump because your surrounding temperature, your outside temperature is low. So this time T2 ambient is 3 degrees Celsius. So 3 is how much? 278. 278. Yes? 276, sorry. 276. Okay. And your room you have to maintain at 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298 Kelvin. So in order to maintain this, I need to continuously give it heat. Okay. So Q1 I will give by taking Q2 from the surrounding, install heat pump and I require work input. Okay. Now again, try to imagine something here. Again, try to imagine something here that in winters, in winters, what is happening? This is your room. And your room temperature is 300 Kelvin. Okay. Now ambient temperature, ambient temperature is in winters, it's low, right? For example, 5 degree, 3 degree Celsius. So let us say it is what it is. Let us say 2, uh, 275 Kelvin. Okay. So now here we have low temperature. Here we have high temperature. But so naturally what will happen? This heat will leakage again. Or now you can say heat loss. Now maybe it is more understandable that I can say heat loss is happening from the house. How much? 110 watts or kilowatt or whatever. Okay. Now because this heat is going out from the room, the temperature of this room will reduce. If I want to maintain this temperature as constant, I need to continuously give heat. How much? Q1, which is equals to this heat Q loss. So to maintain this heat temperature, how will I supply this? By installing a heat pump and this heat pump will require some work input and take heat Q2 from the surrounding itself. From this surrounding only it will take heat. Otherwise there is a source. There is no source. Whatever heat you are taking, you are taking from surrounding only. Okay. So now Q1 is equals to 110 kilowatt. So now my COP, which is reversible, it is T1 upon T1 minus T2 is equals to Q1 upon work input. So T1 is 298 upon 22 is equals to 110 is equals to work input. Okay. So you can find out work input. Okay, work input, you can find out 8.12 kilowatt. Yes, I think that is correct. Okay, so this is a little one, you know, uh, one level uh, plus question. Okay, little I have increased the level, but I think you understood the concept. Did you or you have any doubt? Mm -hmm. Did you understand the concept of refrigerator and heat pump? How do they work? Yes, no, maybe, doubts, anything. Come on, guys, where is everyone? Okay, very nice. What else? Who else? Okay. Theek hai. Yes, Srinidhi, do you want to ask something? You have raised your hand. And I think you have layer, lowered it as well. But anyway, I think it is clear. Okay. So let us move on to the next question. A reversible. So this is for second law. This is the last question. I will give you two questions for homework. And then we will move to entropy. Okay, very nice. Thank you. So now a uh, irreversible heat engine extract heat. So what do you have? You have a heat engine. And 
and it extract heat from high temperature source q1 is equals to 100 kilowatt and rejects heat to the sink q2 is equals to 50 kilowatt the entire work output of this okay so i need a bigger space here i did not see this question coming anyway so i need this 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 okay now you see but little this one okay let's move ahead so we have a re irreversible heat engine so what do we have we have a heat engine and it is taking heat q1 is equals to 100 kilowatt and reject heat q2 is equals to 50 kilowatt okay now the entire work output of this heat engine is required to drive a reversible heat pump so whatever output work output you are getting let us say w1 we are giving it to a heat pump we are giving it to the reversible heat pump you see be very cautious this is irreversible and this is reversible so it is reversible heat pump okay everything we have given to reversible heat pump whatever work we are getting from heat engine we have given it to heat pump okay operating between a set of independent isothermal reservoirs of 17 and 75 degree celsius so lower temperature higher temperature so let me write it here t1 let me write t2 let me write t3 let me write t4 so t4 is 17 t4 is 17 okay so this is 17 degree celsius this is 75 degree celsius the rate at which heat pump delivers heat to its high temperature sink is so tell me what i need to find out what which value w1 q1 q2 q3 q4 what do i need to find out yes very nice q4 i need to find out and they have given me this heat pump is reversible and i know temperatures so quickly quickly what will i do I will write COP of this heat pump is equal to but what will I do with COP? I don't know W1 and Q4 as well. So Q4 also I don't know. So I need W1 first. I need to find out W1 first okay so let me find out w1 first so look efficiency of heat engine is equals to w1 upon q1 yes or i can also write q1 minus q2 by q1 so what is q1 
हंड्रेड माइनस फिफ्टी अपॉन हंड्रेड ओके सो इट इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव इज द एफिशियंसी ऑफ दिस इ रिवर्सिबल हीट इंजन सो आई कैन राइट जीरो पॉइंट फाइव इज इक्वल्स टू डब्ल्यू वन अपॉन क्यू वन इज वन हंड्रेड सो डब्ल्यू वन इज ऑल्सो फिफ्टी किलो वॉट नो ऑल दिस फिफ्टी इज गिवेन टू रिवर्सिबल हीट पंप ऑल दिस फिफ्टी इज गिवेन टू रिवर्सिबल हीट पंप सो नाउ आई कैन गो टू माई सीओपी फॉर्मूला now i can go to my cop of reversible heat pump is equals to now i can write it in the form of temperature so what t3 by t4 t3 minus t4 okay is equals to q4 by w1 okay so t3 is how much 75 so 75 is how much 75 will be uh, 273 one second 273 plus 75 is 348 and the difference is 75 minus 17 58 okay q4 i don't know w is 50 w is 50 so q4 i can find out It is how much? Three hundred kilo watt. Three hundred kilo watt. Yes, Manakshi, that is correct. Is it clear? okay so let us see one more question now this is simple question this is for your homework this simple question you can do it in your homework and let us see this question let us see this question okay so what is this what is this okay okay now we have a carnot heat engine that receives heat from the reservoir so we have what carnot heat engine that is reversible heat engine it receives heat q1 from temperature 900 degree celsius so 900 t1 is equals to 900 degree celsius at the rate of 800 kilo joule per minute and reject heat q2 at 272 is equals to 27 degree celsius now the entire work output of the heat engine is used to drive the refrigerator whatever is coming out as work output we are driving a refrigerator so you see it is not reversible it is not reversible i don't think we will see but i don't think it is reversible so refrigerator that removes heat from the refrigerated space so q3 at minus 5 so t4 minus 5 is 268 268 kelvin okay in fact let me write minus 5 only because everything i have written degree celsius so minus 5 degree celsius and transfers it q4 at 27 so t3 is equals to 27 degree celsius the maximum rate of heat removal from the refrigerated space now tell me and the second is the total rate of heat rejection to the ambient air now first thing 
फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज इज माई रेफ्रिजरेटर रिवर्सिबल और इ रिवर्सिबल फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज इट रिवर्सिबल और इ रिवर्सिबल Is my refrigerator reversible or irreversible? Do you get any hint from anywhere in the question that tells you is it reversible or irreversible? Don't tell me yes or no. Tell me reversible or not? Rever oh, reversible or irreversible? It is irreversible. Shivendra is saying it's reversible. Abhishek is saying irreversible. Anyone else? Sojuna is saying reversible. Okay, good. Amit is saying irreversible. That is also good. Okay. So, okay. I think there is a lot of confusion. So, I have told you what are the things that you need to see. Now, can you read this statement? The maximum rate of heat removal from the refrigerated space. What does it mean? It means that what is the purpose what is the purpose of refrigerator to remove this heat to remove this heat right if your engine is capable of removing maximum heat that means work input will automatically be minimized okay why because q3 plus w is equals to q4 okay so if this is maximum this will automatically be minimum okay so you can say minimum work input or you can say maximum heat extracted it is one and the same thing and this is reversible this is reversible is it clear to everyone or should i explain it one more time why is it reversible do you understand Okay, any doubt, anyone? No? Since you are not replying, I think it is clear. Okay, so look. So, this is a reversible. The last statement is telling you it is, it is reversible. Okay. Second is the total rate of heat rejection to the ambient air. So now tell me what I need to find out. B part, what I need to find out. Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, what I need to find out. Jay is saying Q4, Sujana is saying Q4. Anyone else? Guys, Q4 is not the correct answer, so please try. This yes, Minakshi, that is correct. Q4 plus Q2. By look, this is also rejected to the surrounding. This is also rejected to the surrounding. So total rate of heat rejection to the ambient air is Q2 plus Q4. This is surrounding temperature, right? And this is also surrounding temperature. They have written it. Rejects the waste heat to the ambient air. Okay. And here also they have written transfers it to same, same ambient air at 27. Clear? Clear? Yes? No? Why it Q4 plus Q2? Okay. So let's now move ahead to the question. So I need to find out, first of all, maximum rate of heat removal. So First of all, I can find out COP, 
of refrigerator which is t3 by t3 minus t4 okay so it is 27 one second it should be t4 right t4 upon t3 minus t4 okay so t4 is 268 and the difference is 32 difference is 32 okay so this is 8 point this is reversible refrigerator okay 8.375 now this is also equal to q3 by work okay now both are unknown this is also unknown this is also unknown so what will i do i have to go back and i have to find out w first i need to find out w first how will i do that how will i do that so i will have to find out efficiency first i will have to find out efficiency efficiency of heat engine is equals to t1 1 minus t2 by t1 is equals to work upon q1 so it is 1 minus t2 is how much 27 means 300 and 900 means 1173 is equals to w upon q1 w upon q1 is 800 okay so w is equals to 5 how much 595 huh? 300 divided by 1173 1 minus answer into 800 595 yes Sujana, that is correct 595.4 okay kilojoule per minute this is my work now i can substitute my work here and i can find out q3 okay so q3 is equals to 8.375 into work which is 595.4 so q3 is equals to how much calculate it Srujana. 4986 yes kilojoule per minute so this is your q3 this is your first part maximum heat removal now the total heat rate of heat rejection to the ambient how will i do that just energy balance so now if you do energy balance here in this you will have q1 is equals to w plus q2 okay so q1 is how much q1 is 800 is equals to 595.4 plus q2 okay so q2 you will be able to find out how much How much is Q2? 204.6 kilojoule per minute. Here also you can do energy balance. Q3 is going in, W is going in, coming out is Q4. So Q3, I have calculated here 4986 work is 595.4 is equals to Q4. So how much is Q4? Five five eight one point four kilojoule per minute. So the total heat rate, uh, total rate of heat rejection to the ambient is Q2 plus Q4. So you can add Q2 and Q4. 
you will get the correct answer okay clear yes is it clear so this is your correct answer 5986 5786 okay clear I, i think 90% of the people will do this question wrong if they directly see this in exam okay so either you will calculate q4 or you will calculate q2 so just try to read the question carefully and first of all understand the question what it is saying okay chalo so now next question again it is for homework simple question heat pump okay now let us move to entropy let us move to entropy questions now we have one more hour let us move to entropy okay so first question a reversible heat engine draws five made now this is entropy from here okay a reversible heat engine draws 5 kilo mega joule from 400 kelvin reservoir and does 840 kilo joule of work it also is involves heat interaction from 300 kelvin and 200 kelvin reservoir what which of the following options are correct okay so some options are given let me take this on another okay so we have a reversible engine this is my engine it removes q1 is equals to 5 mega joule from t1 is equals to 400 kelvin okay and it produces 840 kilo joule of work now it involves heat interaction from 300 kelvin and 200 kelvin reservoir as well so now you see look i don't know how it is interacting with this and this reservoir so at least one of them at least one of them will be rejection this is what i know so let us take t2 is equals to 300 kelvin and it is q2 at least one of them will be rejected the next one let me take 200 kelvin and it is giving heat q3 so let us say this is t3 okay t3 so this is what it is doing now it is saying which of the following options are correct which of the following options are correct okay so the first thing that i need to do here is first thing that i need to do here is i need to find out q2 and q3 q2 and q3 so what will i do i will do the energy balance i will do the energy balance so energy balance is first law of thermodynamics okay if this is my system if this is my system energy in is equals to energy out now what is coming in i q1 i know is coming in q2 i know it is going okay let me not write q2 here what else is coming in q3 is coming in i have assumed q3 is coming in okay? coming in okay now what is going out work output is going out and q2 is going out okay so q2 can i write q2 5000 plus q3 is equals to 840 plus q2 so can i write q3 mm -hmm.
ओके सो लेट मी राइट Q3 थ्री माइनस क्यू टू इज इक्वल्स टू एट फोर्टी माइनस फाइव थाउजेंड इज इक्वल्स टू दिस ओके नाउ वी हैव टू अन नोन्स वन इक्वेशन टू अन नोन वी नीड वन मोर इक्वेशन हाउ विल वी गेट वन मोर इक्वेशन now if you remember the clausius inequality do you remember clausius what was clausius inequality do you remember anyone remember clausius inequality we have discussed this in the last class clausius inequality the first thing that we have discussed what is clausius inequality you not yes or no just what is clausius inequality that is what i i want to know nobody remembers this okay do you remember this cyclic integral of dq by t is less than equal to 0 for cycle okay for cycle it is less than equal to 0 if it is reversible then cyclic integral of dq by t is equals to 0 if it is irreversible then cyclic integral of dq by t is less than 0 okay so what do we have we have a reversible cycle we have a reversible cycle so can i say cyclic integral of dq by t is equals to 0 yes okay now q1 by t1 q2 is going out so it will be minus q2 by t2 q3 i have assumed it is coming in so plus q3 by t3 is equals to 0 okay so q1 is how much 5000 upon 400 q2 is how much i don't know this is 300 plus q3 is how much i don't know t3 is 200 is equals to 0 okay so if i solve this if i solve this i will get a equation in terms of q2 and q3 so this is 4 three uh 12 is 400 okay this is 1200 and 3 okay so this is 15000 minus 3 4 4q2 plus 6q3 is equals to 0 okay so i have gotten what 6 q3 minus 4 q2 is equals to minus 15000 okay do you agree with me these two equations do you agree with me so now there is nothing now you can calculate q3 and q2 so q3 is can you calculate this put the value in calculator because i do not have the same calculation so just one second equation 1 unknowns to 1 minus 1 minus 4 1 6 0 6 minus 
minus 15,000. Okay. So Q3 we are getting 820. Okay. And Q2 we are getting 4980 kilo. So everything is in kilojoule. Okay. So now you see one thing. Now you see one thing. After doing everything, we got this also positive, this also positive. This simply means I am seriously telling you I have assumed a random sign. Okay. I have randomly assumed that it is going here and it is absorbing. I did not know that I will get positive, positive and my directions will be correct. But it is just luck. But sometimes what you will do, if I would have taken here Q3, instead of here, I have taken as Q, you know, like here I have taken 200 Kelvin and here I would have taken 300 uh, Kelvin, then the signs will be different. So it simply means, it will simply mean that your signs should be opposite. Simply means, for example, Q3 is positive. It means that the sign that I have chosen is correct. If you will get a negative 820, that means the sign that you have chosen is incorrect. It should be opposite. So instead of going in, it should be going out of the system, of the cycle. Okay, got it? Luckily, we got positive in both of them. That means the signs that we assumed were correct. <coughs> Clear? What if both signs are different? So could it look uh, if you will get if you will get like this? Uh, one second. OK, so OK, no, let me write plus here itself. But for example, you would have gotten if you have taken uh, just one second, let me. So instead of this, if we have taken something like this, look, this is something I know already. This Q1 is equals to 5 mega joule. No, no, you, I mean, okay, wait, I'll tell you something. T1 is equals to 400 Kelvin. This is fixed. You, you see, this we can't do anything. This is already given in question. But if we would have taken that, T3 is equals to 300 Kelvin and this is my Q3 and this is Q2 and this is T2 is equals to 200 Kelvin. Okay. So in the end you would have gotten Q2 is equals to minus 4980 kilojoule and Q3 is equals to minus 820 kilojoule 820 kilojoule so it simply means that q2 i have assumed it is going out of this cycle but no because the sign is negative it simply means that q2 sign is like this it is going inside the cycle okay now this is sign is also negative q3 so q3 is negative means it is not going in it is going out. One must go out. So Sujana, to answer your question, one positive, one negative, you will not get something like this. Okay. Your signs will be something like this, that always you will get one out. Maybe you can get more than one out, but at least one out you will get. Okay. So okay, that is the second law of thermodynamics, right? If you are not getting anything out, that means you have made PMM2, perpetual machine 2, which is impossible according to Kelvin Planck's statement. Okay. So, of course, uh, questions I can ask, ask, I mean, in terms of asking questions, I can ask anything, but that case will never happen. Okay. If that case is you are getting something like this, that means you have done some mistake in your calculation. Okay. Got it, everyone.
what about other people they are also part of class right are you able to understand or if you have any doubt just ask okay okay then let's move on to the next question refrigerant 134 so we have a refrigerator now we have a refrigerator now and it enters in the coil of an evaporator of a refrigerator refrigerating system a saturated liquid vapor mixture at pressure of 140 so you see you have a refrigeration system you have an evaporator here this is your evaporator so your evaporator have coils right in which the you have coils like this in which refrigerant flows okay so you have coils like this so refrigerant actually flows inside this coil which absorbs heat from the space so this refrigerant is absorbing heat from the space which you want to cool it is called as refrigerated space okay so the refrigerant here that is flowing is 134a it is entering into the coil of the ref evaporator of system as saturated liquid vapor mixture so we have what we have a mixture here at the pressure of so pressure here is 140 kilo pascal the saturation temperature saturation temperature is minus 18.77 degree celsius now the refrigerant absorbs 180 kilo joule how much heat it is absorbing 180 kilo joule of heat from the cooled space from the cooled space which is maintained so this temperature is minus 10 degree celsius and leaves at saturated vapor so here it is vapor saturated vapor here it is mixture here it is vapor okay at the same pressure determine entropy of the refrigerant entropy of the refrigerant now i hope you all know one thing i have already told you earlier the concept of sensible and latent heat okay so you see here it is liquid plus vapor and it is just vapor so inside the coil it is absorbing heat to convert from liquid to vapor to only vapor that means only all the liquid is converting to vapor only phase change is happening okay here we have some liquid but till it is it is absorbing heat inside and all the liquid is slowly converting into vapor and when it is coming out it is only vapor so this is latent heat latent heat means no temperature change only phase change is happening here only phase change is happening okay now the first thing is entropy change of the refrigerant entropy change of the refrigerant so can you tell me how can i calculate entropy change now you see refrigerant is my system Refri refrigerant is my system so how can i calculate just look at these formulas just look at these formulas and tell me what is the case that i am dealing with are you able to identify which case i need to apply i need to calculate entropy change right i need to calculate entropy change but what case is it isothermal heat transfer or is it non isothermal heat transfer which one is this 
Is it isothermal or non-isothermal? Come on, guys. Yes, what is the doubt? It's isothermal, right? There are two. Look, first of all, phase change is happening. So that is the case of isothermal. Also here also I have told you that liquid is only converting to vapor. Nothing else is happening here. Here we have liquid plus vapor. Liquid is absorbing heat, converting into vapor. That's all. Here it is completely vapor. Saturated vapor they are saying. So only phase change is happening. Phase change means no temperature change. So it is isothermal. So it is the case of iso reversible isothermal heat transfer. And I know how to calculate entropy change in that. Okay. So T by T. Okay. So how much is Q? Q is absorbed. Q is by this refrigerant is absorbing heat, so it will be positive. So 180 by minus 18.77. Okay. So at saturated condition, it is a saturation temperature at which phase change happens. Okay. So 273 minus 18, it's 254.4. So entropy changes kilojoule per Kelvin. Second is entropy change of the cooled space. Entropy changed of the cooled space now tell me now tell me what formula i can apply here of the refrigerated space is it isothermal heat transfer or non isothermal first of all is it isothermal or non isothermal Come on, guys, quickly, otherwise, we will not be able to solve questions. I want you to answer it. So that at least you will get the. If I will tell you, then it will be too easy for you. And you will not remember. I want you to remember till the later period of time. Okay, people are saying non isothermal, but let me tell you what it is saying. The refrigerant absorbs 180 kilojoule of heat. From the cooled space, which is maintained at minus 10. That means we are maintaining a constant temperature inside the space intentionally. And in order to maintain that space, this much heat is always removed from the system. This much heat is always removed. So again, this is the isothermal heat transfer, and I, but the heat is going out. So minus Q by T is equals to minus 180 upon 263. That is why I wanted you to answer so you will understand where are you going wrong. Okay. Otherwise, if I tell you it is isothermal, you will just take, take it on my word. Okay. Now, total entropy change of this process. Okay, tell me one thing. Can I get it? Negative this value. Can I get negative? Yes, no. Is it possible to get this value negative? Really, Minakshi? Anyone who says yes, Shivendra is saying yes. Anyone else? Very good, Shivendra. Anyone who is saying no or yes, please guys contribute quickly. You should know where you are going wrong. If you just keep taking, you know, like if you are not answering, then that means you're not putting your mind in that, you know, that stress. To understand things. So anyone, yes, no, please come on. Whatever you are understanding, whatever we have done till now, what is your understanding? Can it be positive or negative? Just tell me, can it be negative? Okay, yes or no? Can it be negative? 
ओके एनी वन एल्स सो ऑल ऑफ द पीपल एक्सेप्ट मीनाक्षी इज सेंग येस एंड दे आर ऑल रॉन्ग ओके एंड मीनाक्षी इज करेक्ट आई टोल्ड यू इंक्रीज इन एंट्रोपी प्रिंसिपल वॉट वॉज इंक्रीज इन एंट्रोपी प्रिंसिपल इट वॉज एंट्रोपी चेंज ऑफ यूनिवर्स विच इज एंट्रोपी ऑफ सिस्टम प्लस एंट्रोपी ऑफ सराउंडिंग इज ऑलवेज पॉजिटिव सो हेयर ऑल्सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग आर प्रोसेस इज हैपनिंग एंड इन दिस प्रोसेस दिस स्पेस इज रिजेक्टिंग हीट एंड दिस refrigerant is absorbing heat okay so in this process in this is the process in which heat transfer is happening so one system is rejecting heat or transfer rejecting heat and rest of it is surrounding that is absorbing heat okay so basically it is it can never be negative it is always positive that is increase in entropy principle okay so okay so so if look it's up to you you can take any one of the you can take this as system so this will be surrounding for you if you take this as system then this will be surrounding for you it does not matter does not matter what a system but one is if you assume one as system the other will be surrounding automatically okay so it is 0.707 Minus zero point six eight four four. If you are getting this as negative, that means you have done something wrong in your calculations. Okay, so it is zero point zero two two six kilojoule per kelvin. So Minakshi, very good. I don't know if you it was a fluke or whatever, but the answer was correct. Okay, chalo. Let's move on to the next question. 2 kg of water at 80 degree celsius uh, is mixed adiabatically with 3 kg of water at 30 degree celsius in a constant temperature process find the increase in entropy of the total mass of water total mass of water okay theek hai let's okay i know me i'm just kidding minakshi it's okay i know if you would have answered i mean you would have some understanding of it okay chalo so what we are saying is you have two streams of water let us say like this okay so one stream is coming like this so mass m1 is equals to 2 kg and temperature is equals to 80 degree celsius second stream is also coming so m2 is equals to 3 kg and temperature t2 is equals to 30 degree celsius and of course here it will mix right here it will mix so here it will be m3 which is equals to m1 plus m2 is equals to 5 kg and t3 so can i write t3 is equals to t1 plus t2 By two, can I do that? Yes, no. Because I know at least one guy, one person would be here. Okay, first tell me, can I do that? Yes or no? Yes, no, quickly. It's already ten thirty-one. Look, why I am doing all this because I know that you people will have these doubts. Even when I was in the very beginning of you know my preparation, even when I was studying, these kind of very small small doubts used to come in my mind. And you will, when you solve questions, you will find these kind of doubts. So I just want to clarify all these doubts. So 
is it yes or no tell me quickly can we do this then we'll solve this question quickly <laughs> after the last question i think people get scared now no one is answering okay so if you are going to say yes then you are wrong okay there is no temp have you heard temperature conservation no there is mass conservation or energy conservation so you cannot do this this is a part temperature is a part of energy conservation okay so you cannot do this t3 i need to calculate later on but now i need to find out entropy i need to find out entropy change in this process what process it is a mixing process you see here fluid is coming here fluid is and mixing is happening so this is a mixing process so what is entropy change in this mixing process will be you see this fluid is coming so it has some entropy here and when it will come here then its entropy will change so that is a change in entropy of first fluid plus this fluid is coming and when it will mix its entropy will change so that is change in entropy of second so now i need to find out the entropy change in one and entropy change in two before that i need t3 i need t3 okay so how do i find out t3 so again do energy balance energy balance so how do you how how do you say do energy balance so there are two ways you can do it i don't know if i should tell you both of them but uh, okay let's do with one of them okay so you see when the fluid when this you see this is at higher temperature and this is at lower temperature so when they will come and mix here this first fluid will transfer heat to second fluid okay so q absorbed or q rejected by fluid 1 is equals to q absorbed by fluid two okay so q rejected by one q rejected by one will be m cp delta t of one m cp delta t of two okay so this is what two into cp now this is water okay this is water so you need to know the value of c okay cp is given also but sometimes it's not given so you need to know that the value of cp for water this value you need to remember 4.2 kilo joule per kg kelvin similarly cp and cv and r for air these value also you need to remember okay cp and this is initial temperature 353 minus final temperature now for 2 it is 3 kg cp of water t final minus initial is 3303 okay cp and cp will get cancelled t final will be 323 kelvin 323 kelvin okay so you see in this this fluid is doing heat transfer but temperature is changing initial temperature was this final is this similarly this fluid is absorbing heat and its temperature is changing from 30 from 303 to 323 it, its its temperature is increasing its temperature is decreasing now can you tell me is it isothermal heat transfer or non isothermal heat transfer isothermal or non isothermal now i have given you on the plate the answer i have given you on the plate quickly tell me is this no isothermal heat transfer or non isothermal yes sujana that is correct that is non you see I, my temperature is changing my temperature is decreasing my temperature is increasing here okay so when the temperature is changing and you see it is water it is water so you will again go to your page 
you will go to your non isothermal on which one solids and liquid and you will calculate entropy you will calculate entropy yes one second i will explain you what is adiabatic so basically adiabatic means here in even in heat exchanger questions you will see adiabatic heat exchanger okay so adiabatic here means that you know this pipe is insulated so what does it mean this pipe is insulated it simply means that there is no interaction you see this is your system now this is i have made a mess of this diagram but anyway look this is your system this green part is your system okay so from this system to the surrounding there is no heat transfer that is adiabatic okay so adiabatic means no heat transfer system and surrounding between system and surrounding there is no heat transfer that is adiabatic okay it should cross the boundary right heat should cross the boundary but this is my system already this is my system okay got it similarly you will see in heat exchangers in i think i explained that earlier as well if it will come i will explain it today as well but in heat exchanger what happens in heat exchangers they will say adiabatic so this is your heat exchanger hot fluid is going in here cold fluid is coming in here and they say adiabatic so basically your this is insulated okay whole heat exchanger is insulated heat transfer is happening but inside the system this is your system this is your system this is your system so heat transfer is happening inside the system between the system and surrounding there is no heat transfer so it is adiabatic heat exchanger okay got it okay so now i have you have seen the formula so you you can write the formula quickly it is m c p l n t final by t initial m1 m2 c p l n t final by t initial okay so it is 2 into 4.187 ln 323 by 353 plus 3 into 4.187 ln 323 by 303 so you will get again you will get a positive number you cannot get for the process you cannot for system for one of them you can get negative but for the entire process you cannot get negative okay got it quickly tell me got it okay let's move ahead to the next question okay a rigid tank is divided into two equal parts by partition okay so we have a rigid tank and two equal parts i have divided i know it is not equal parts but okay theek hai one part of the tank contain 2.5 kg of compressed liquid water so mass is equals to 2.5 kg of water at 400 kilo pascal and temperature 60 degree celsius okay and 0.0010 meter cube per kg okay so this is specific volume 1 is equals to 0.001017 meter cube per kg while the other part is evacuated other part is evacuated 
now you remove the partition now the remove now you remove the partition so once you have removed the partition so what will happen so once you have removed the partition so this gas will expand right oh, sorry this water will expand when this water will expand to fill the entire tank determine the entropy change of the water during this process if the final pressure so now you tell me what is the final mass can you tell me what is the final mass what is the final mass quickly if this is 1 or initial 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 what is final mass come on guys quickly yes it is same mass is not changing the same gas is expanded pressure it is given me pressure is reduced of course p final is 40 kilo pascal t final i don't know t final i don't know okay t final i don't know and if the final and what is the specific volume is two times because volume is increase okay so this is your v2 one second so now they are saying that at 400 kilo pascal this is your entropy at 40 kilo pascal this is your sfg sfg so i i don't think you would be aware are, are you aware of this sfg concept hfg sfg phase change i mean i have briefly explained but i don't think uh, this is the part of your uh, i mean will you are you able to understand what is sfg otherwise we can skip this question because it is usually i take in mechanical classes uh have you this understanding of this concept sfg which is sg minus sf and uh, entropy of saturated gas and ent and ent entropy of saturated fluid no okay okay then it's it's okay we can leave this question okay Uh, we can leave this question and we can move to the next question leave it okay leave this question this usually i take for uh, mechanical classes okay theek hai now 10 grams of water at 20 degree celsius is converted into ice at minus 10 degree celsius Minus ten. So basically, what you are doing, you are converting water to ice. So, if this is temperature, this is entropy. So first of all, first of all, what will happen? Let us say water is there at twenty degree. Okay. So you have water at temperature twenty degree. celsius now you have to convert into ice so if you want to convert into ice you have to bring this temperature down to 0 degree celsius okay so you will bring it down like this 0 degree celsius like this okay then this water it is just water okay it is just water so this water will be converted into ice so ice will convert into at constant temperature so this is sensible heat this is latent heat so this at this point it is water at 0 degree celsius at this point it is ice at 0 degree celsius but we have ice at minus 10 degree celsius so that means we have to further come down to this temperature e is equals to minus 10 degree celsius and it will be like this okay 
so now this is ice at minus 10 degree celsius this is water at 10 degree celsius okay so three we are transferring heat basically it is rejecting heat water by when will water convert into ice when the water is rejecting heat okay so it is continuously rejecting heat and we are doing three processes here okay so these so let us say here entropy is change one here entropy change two here entropy change three so total entropy change of the system will be entropy change one plus entropy change two plus entropy change three now you see here temperature is changing temperature is changing so what formula i am going to use what formula i am going to use i am going to use by we have water and, and, and temperature is changing. I'm so, uh, if I said entropy, I'm sorry. I went temperature is changing. Okay. So temperature is non isothermal and liquid. So I will use this formula. In the next part, temperature is not changing. Only phase is changing water to ice. So we will use this formula. And then finally, we have ice which is solid and temperature is changing. So we will use again this formula. Okay. So it is mass cp water into ln t final t final is 20 degree so it is uh, no t final is what this 0 degree so 273 by initial is 20 degree so it is 293 okay then plus delta s2 now here heat is rejected okay heat is rejected at constant temperature so here it will be q upon constant temperature which is t saturation which is 273 okay so q is what q is q is what mass into latent heat mass into latent heat okay upon 273 now mind one thing everywhere heat is rejected to the surrounding here also here also here also heat is going out but in this formula we already take care of minus sign but here it is just q so i have to take care of minus here okay here we already take care of minus by using this integration we already take care of minus okay now plus here also a temperature is changing so i will write m cp of ice into ln 263 by 273 okay so now i just simply write 10 into 4 4.2 okay cp of water is also given here sometimes it is not given as i told you so just try to remember this value 4.2 into ln 273 by 293 minus 10 into 330 calorie this is latent heat of fusion 335 upon 273 plus 10 into cp of ice is half of water okay so it is 2.1 into ln 263 by 273 so it is minus 2.97 12.27 minus 0.784 and minus 16 joule per kelvin why is it minus this is minus because you see this delta s2 is not taking care of q by temperature so here it is simple q we are not taking care of the sign here so sign will be according to if heat is getting added it will be positive if heat is getting rejected then minus q by t but here here what do we do 
we do delta s is equals to q upon temper and this t okay so here we see m c p d t by t so basically when we integrate we already take care of the units here okay we already take care of the units if it is heat rejected or absorbed so but here we have no sign so we have to put a minus sign here because in this particular case heat is rejected okay final by initial look i'll tell you what is happening here do you understand this is joule right this 4.2 joule per kg kelvin actually it should be kilojoule this value is not doesn't seem correct but 335 yeah yeah look this is also joule kilojoule per kg this is kg okay yeah just one second turn into yeah look everything is in kilojoule everything is in kilojoule okay just one second let me explain uh, surjana question one more surjana did you understand what we discussed earlier or i need to explain it more okay okay theek hai but anyway so basically you see here we have to put minus and here this will take care of the units if the temperature final temperature is less you that means the heat is rejected and you will get minus here if the final temperature yani ki numerator is high that means heat is getting absorbed so you will get positive here okay now uh, shivendra raj there is a problem in this uh, part here cp is basically 4.2 kilo joule per kg kelvin okay and this is 335 you can also write this kilo joule per kg kilo joule per kg okay so this should also be kilo joule per kelvin this should also be kilo joule per kelvin okay entropy of the system is decreased because the heat is rejected by the water okay if heat is rejected it is look the state is changed so you can understand also like in some other way you can say that molecules are more orderly arranged if it is solid molecules are more orderly arranged randomness is low but it is the result that has happened because of what because of the heat transfer so basically heat transfer is causing the entropy drop okay phase change liquid to solid is basically a resultant of the heat transfer okay that units doubt is clear okay so let's move ahead then we are almost running late okay so let us see if we can do one or two more questions so now what do we have a 600 g copper block and with cp basically with cp 
of this at 100 degree celsius so basically you see what we have we have a lake and the temperature of lake is equals to 8 degree celsius and we put a copper block this copper block okay mass is 600 gram cp is given cp of this copper block is 150 joule per kelvin at 100 degree celsius so temperature is also 100 degree celsius entropy change i need to tell entropy change i need to tell of the process so entropy change of the process will be entropy change of the system plus entropy change of surrounding now let us assume this copper block is my system okay so entropy change of copper plus if copper is my system copper block is my system then what is the water around around it it is my surrounding it is my surrounding okay now you see what is happening this <clears throat> copper is basically at 100 degree celsius and the temperature of lake is 8 degree celsius that means heat transfer will happen heat transfer will happen so q rejected so q rejected by the copper so copper temperature will go down copper temperature will go down yes so it is non isothermal heat rejection non isothermal heat rejection okay so what can you do you can find out delta s by m cp ln t final of copper minus t initial okay plus now can anyone tell me what should what formula should i use in terms of water can you tell me anyone should i use isothermal or non isothermal should i use isothermal or non isothermal minakshi is saying non isothermal anyone non isothermal Anyone else? Purjana is saying isothermal. Okay. So understand one thing. Whenever they use these kind of words, for river, lake, okay, sea, or large volume of water. So it simply means that now you see you have a lake and you put one ton of you know, uh, copper in that lake, which is that 100 degrees Celsius. So, practically, if you even measure the temperature change of that lake, it will not change, right? Even if it will change, it will be like 0.1 degrees Celsius or whatever, but of course, it will not change, okay? Because it is an infinite source of it, uh, it is an infinite thermal reservoir, basically, okay? So, it has the capacity to absorb a lot of heat without changing your its temperature so water temperature is not going to change if they okay 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 is it better now is it is it okay now okay I'm really sorry okay okay theek hai. so do you understand my point when this when they say water when when they say lake river sea a large quantity of water these words if they are mentioning that means they want to assume that it is a large capacity of water and they can it can absorb la large capacity of heat without changing its temperature so water is working as a thermal energy reservoir here got it everyone minakshi shivendra raj did you get why we have to take isothermal here okay so we have to take isothermal and in case of isothermal what will i do i will do q of water by temperature of water okay so now i don't know the final temperature of this block how do i find out by i will do energy balance 
heat rejected by copper is basically heat absorbed by water okay so now you have to see one thing m copper cp copper into t final just one second final temperature is not given okay place in entropy okay so i think that data is missing in this they have actually given the final temperature okay final temperature is 281 kelvin okay 281 kelvin so i think it is what 9 8 8 degree celsius okay okay yeah you have to take the final temperature equal to the water temperature like if you see in equilibrium after eventually what will happen is the final temperature of the copper will be same as final temperature of the lake okay so q rejected is equals to final temp initial minus final so initial is 373 which is 100 degree celsius minus final copper final temperature will be 8 degree celsius which is 281 okay so this is your q absorbed of water or lake now see one thing here what is the unit of this kg what is the unit of this kilo joule per kg kelvin okay so if i combine both of them what is the unit kg kg so basically unit is kilo joule per kelvin so this is what they have given you here cp is 150 joule per kelvin this is what they have given you the product of mass into cp mass into cp okay so do not multiply this by 600 okay do not because the unit you see it is not a mistake they have intentionally give you this okay so just one second okay so basically it is 150 if you multiply 600 with this then you will not get the correct answer okay 373 minus 281 is how much 373 92 okay so q absorbed by lake or water how much is it it is 13800 joules okay so now i can calculate this again this is 150 ln 281 by 373 plus 13800 upon 280 1 okay so if you solve this you see this heat is getting rejected from this copper block so this will automatically come as negative you see my because you see here numerator is less so automatically you will get minus here minus 42.5 this is what i was trying to tell in that question someone asked okay so plus now you see here it is water is absorbing heat so we will not use minus we will keep it as positive so it is i think 49.11 is equals to 6.63 joule per kelvin this is your answer 
ओके इज इट क्लियर यस एनी डाउट आस्क मी इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट Is it clear, everyone? Okay. Where is everyone? Only one person is here. okay let us move on to the last question for today and then the rest of the question i will give you for homework okay i think there is one more question after this 18 and 19 okay two more questions that you will do for homework okay 18 is homework 19 is also homework just try them yourself let us do the 17th question okay i was thinking that i'll cover everything but okay anyway i think i think i think i have covered enough you will get some idea and try to do the questions yourself if you have some doubt we'll discuss in the last next class okay chalo consider the following two process a heat source of 200 kelvin 200 oh sorry 1200 kelvin loses 25 hundred kilo joule to the heat sink of 800 kelvin then another one is a heat source of 800 kelvin loses 2000 kilo joule at 500 kelvin which of the following statement is true process 1 is more irreversible process second is more irreversible irreversible associated in the both the processes are equal shivanaraj wait wait and both the processes are reversible okay so irreversibility is basically shown by entropy more the entropy more the irreversibility so if i talk about this so delta s of the first system will be delta s of this one first one and this one okay so what can i do add again is it isothermal or non isothermal is it isothermal or non isothermal heat transfer this heat transfer is isothermal or non isothermal quickly guys it's what come on no baba it's isothermal no it is a heat source what do you mean by heat source when this heat is going out it is a heat source its temperature is not going to change similarly it is heat sink when it is absorbing heat its temperature is not changing yes punya that is correct isothermal yes very good okay so i can write minus q upon 1200 plus q upon 800 okay because this heat is going out heat is going out so Minus twenty five hundred plus twenty five hundred, so it is one point zero four one six seven. Now for this system, I can write minus two thousand 
अपॉन एट हंड्रेड प्लस टू थाउजेंड अपॉन फाइव हंड्रेड सो इट इज वन पॉइंट फाइव ओके सो यू सी डेल्टा एस एंट्रोपी ऑफ सेकेंड इज ग्रेटर देन एंट्रोपी चेंज ऑफ द फर्स्ट सिस्टम एंड देयर फोर प्रोसेस सेकेंड is more irreversible than process 1 okay so entropy change of second process is more than the entropy change of first process therefore process second is more irreversible okay so b is the correct option ओके, सो अगेन दिस इज योर क्वेश्चन नंबर 18, शिवेंद्र राज ट्राई टू डू इट क्वेश्चन नंबर 19 इज दिस ओके एंड इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट जस्ट आस्क इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास विल डिस्कस इट and very important revise these form do not just you know try to remember the formulas you have to know first of all how are how we have defined these formulas and then you need to be very clear when to use which formula okay so you see solids and liquid if gas would be there we could have used an any of these formulas i am really sorry i could not bring any gas question block of ice this is also solid okay but anyway try to do some questions on gas as well okay so these are your uh, practice session for second law and entropy i hope uh, i mean are you getting some idea of the things that we have discussed yes or no are you getting more familiar with the formulas that we discussed in the last class okay so again revision is up to you you have to revise you have to solve as many questions as possible okay so i think we are already running late uh, almost 20 minutes okay i will close the session here and we will meet uh, uh, next week okay for the next class got it thank you thank you thank you punya bye bye guys Thank you, Sarjana. Shivendra Das, thank you. Okay, okay, okay. So many thank yous. Bye, bye. Tata.